What we want to look at today is two things that you guys saw here on the map the other day, on the 1763 map that were not on the 1754 map. And if you look here, right, you'll see this line, this blue line that kind of goes around what's called the 13 colonies, okay? And that kind of separates this area here from this area over here. So if we look over here, the map key is called the Proclamation Line of 1763. Now a proclamation is an official announcement. So an announcement of a line took place in 1763. So we might want to know why is that line there? That line is kind of like a border, okay? And you'll notice it separates what we call the 13 colonies, even though obviously if you look up here, there's more British-owned land up here, and there's British-owned land down here where there are also colonies. But this area is called the 13 colonies because this is our focus, okay? So this line separates the 13 colonies from this area on the other side of it, which also is something that did not appear on the 1754 map. So this striped land, if we look over here at the map key, it says British Reserve for Native Americans. Now, remember we talked about that it's not that there weren't Native Americans here in 1754. Okay, they've been here the whole time since Europeans started coming over. It is that this land is specifically set aside for them by Europeans, which is interesting because they kind of were there first. So why do the Europeans set land aside for them like it's their land? I don't know, but that's a whole nother discussion. But the point is, is this is the disputed land, the Ohio Valley. You can see that name right here. That was won in the war um, that the English fought against the French and their native allies, the French and Indian War. And now it's reserved for Native Americans, okay? So why these two changes? Why a border here and land here that the British is basically saying, okay, this is for Natives? So those are the questions we want to answer today understand why those two things occurred, we're going to be looking at an event today titled Pontiac's Rebellion. Okay, and Pontiac is, if you look up here, he's a skilled, okay, um, leader. He brought Native American nations together to stop the British. By the way, since we're talking about fact and opinion, I'm going to bring this up, and we might all agree on this, but technically, Adding the word skilled here is an opinion. The fact is, is that he was a leader, okay? Um, and he brought the Native American tribes together to stop the British. All right, so to stop the British from doing what? Let's keep reading. So Pontiac's Rebellion, with the defeat of the French, British colonists began moving west to the area the French had claimed. Okay, so that kind of makes sense because they were trying to move into that area before, so once the war is over and the British own the area, it seems to make sense that they would then continue to move into there. So let's see what happens. An Ottawa chief, so Ottawa is the name of the tribe, so an Ottawa chief from the Great Lakes region united several Native American nations to stop them. His name was Pontiac. So that's the same person they're talking about over here, okay? He led a series of very successful attacks on British forts, okay? So this is interesting too, again, since we're talking about fact and opinion, I might as well point this out. So he did attack British forts. However, very successful might be an opinion. Um, we could probably maybe all agree that what he did we would consider successful, um, but maybe some people wouldn't. But the truth is, is that he attacked the British forts and it caused problems. By the spring of 1763, he and his allies had captured eight forts. That sounds like a pretty big accomplishment, but that would be my opinion. All right, in response, so in response, so this paragraph starts out with the word in response. In response to what? That means in response to what they were talking about up here, which was the attack on the forts. So because he was attacking the forts, in response to this, the British government issued the Proclamation of 1763. Hmm, that sounds like the name of the line on the map. You have the word here, issued. Issued means like, you know, to put forth, to make, okay, to send out. So if you get a new issue of the newspaper, it's the newest one for the day, okay? 
So they made a proclamation. Remember, proclamation's announcement. Oh, look, it tells me that right here. It gives me a bold word with a definition. Look at that. A proclamation is an official announcement. This proclamation helped Native Americans living west of the Appalachian Mountains. That's interesting. It forbade, or another word you might learn, uh, no better is forbid. It forbid or forbade settlers from moving there. But the colonists wanting new land ignored the proclamation. They kept moving west. So this is interesting. It forbade or forbid the settlers from moving there. So all that land that the British and the French were arguing over that the settlers wanted to move into, the um, after the war was won and the British government owned the land, they then said their colonists couldn't move in there. So we got to wonder how these things are connected because why wouldn't they let their colonists move in there? Isn't that what they fought for? So I want you to be thinking about why, why would they not let them move there and how is not letting them move there in a response to what happened up here? And we're going to talk about that together.